recording is is interesting on a boat because every lying creek, every halyard bank, every people always say, oh, the howling wind must be great for doing a sailing story. Well, but uh, so I've spent a lot of time learning how to keep things from rolling in cabinets. Well, I mean, like every anybody does, does on a on a boat. But just just uh, tell me a little bit about the audio book business. Never mind that you're doing it on a boat. Yeah. But uh, what got you into that? And um, I know that, that um, some of the people who read my blog are going to be interested. Should I pay somebody to do this? Should I do a royalty split? And I'm just, I'm just curious if you could, you know, what would you, as, as a um, voiceover artist for audiobooks, um, tell authors? Well, yeah, what would you advise authors as far as not only the business options, but what what they're, how they can attract a professional voiceover artist, what are some of the things that they might look for or listen for, what kind of auditions could they post that would be most effective in helping them make a determination? That, you start with, with that, because you've got a, a good list there and you can remind me. Um, an audition that includes dialogue, an audition that includes like you did, anything that has some feeling that you really have a thought about how you want it read. And maybe it's, it's got some poetry or something like that, but uh, something that's got a range. It might even not be a contiguous segment from the book. So that would be a good thought. As far as the talent, I, it is a really, you should listen to audiobooks and you should look at what sells, but you should really also look at what you like. And you should ask, you should ask friends too. As far as, I've had a number of authors who have actually had a little team, either a friends or their publisher, a group, a committee, who have been part of the selection process. And so they did not just depend on their own, um, their own uh, likes. Uh, so the, the business itself is, it's interesting. It's it, it's easy to do in some ways, so everybody's jumping into it, just like what happened with the ebook business uh, not too many years ago. So you do need to pay attention to quality. You need to find some folks. You need to listen carefully to what they do and make sure that you know they don't have uh, mouth sounds and some of the things that shouldn't be there. Anything that's 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 done well. The business. For me, I have always had a, a technical aspect, and so the, I mean, it takes over six hours of producing work for every hour of audio. So you've got to be very happy sitting doing lots of repetitive little, you have to you actually like it, I, for some reason, do. I got into it because, for several reasons, it was something I, I could do independently because uh, I was getting to an age where people don't want to hire you necessarily. Uh, and I really liked the idea of working independently. But it also was a marketplace that handled the, my one downfall, marketing. Uh, most independent contractors spend most of their time marketing as opposed to doing the actual work. You're talking about ACX. Yes, I'm talking about ACX and Audible and Amazon's whole little uh, monopoly with this. And we can say what we want about them, but it works. And for authors to have the Kindle book, the audio book, and the CreateSpace paperback all right there for someone to get right from the same page, it's, it's not, to be, um, uh, not to be thrown aside easily. Um, you know, I, I also get into it. I wanted to do, I, I, I wanted to do voiceover for, uh, for years. My, my dad had done it, and people had always told me I ought to do it. I did a couple of radio stints doing radio years back. And then the voiceover business was kind of crazy with people doing work for nothing. And so I kind of gave it up. And then ACX showed up. And it was it was amazing. And the royalty share deal is, I think it's great for the author and the narrator. Because there's, there's no risk. Well, there's risk for the author. If you don't get a good narration, you, you've wasted time. But you don't have to put money up front for right. something you don't end up being happy with. There's risk for me as a narrator, but if we both do our homework, it, it works out beautifully. 
for everybody. And everybody's invested. You talked about that some too. I mean, I have an interest. I want your book to succeed. You know. Right. So. Well, I just I was I was really curious because of course I'm a book coach and people call me and they want to publish their books and I'll help them self publish and I'll help them avoid the vanity presses and keep yes. their royalties and all that. But I have to tell people, look, your chances of selling enough books to pay my fees are are pretty low. So we're going to do this. We're going to make it a labor of love and it'll yeah. be your love and my love, but I'm not taking any risk. I'm, it's my business and you'll pay me for it. And you'll, you'll, you know, so I guess what happens is the whole audio book market seems like it's a, a riper market and I don't have my experience with it, but you're working with writers and selling books for them. It's, and that's... I'm really, really, really pleased. I've got a, I've got a dozen books on the shelves. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking at between 16 and 20 books a day, many days now, which is just ramping wow. up. And that's about half a dozen of the books that are selling. And I've got an odd, I don't know if you've looked at my list, it's kind of an odd list. A lottery winner who uh, won the lottery twice using the law of attraction. And so he tells how to do that. It, it's fascinating. Uh, uh, a shaman that I've done three books for and followers all over the world. Uh, and, and some interesting autobiographical stuff. Uh, it, the market, though, technically is, by every measure, is growing, uh, whereas the ebook market is, is, is leveling off some. The audiobook apparently is still expanding like crazy. And um, so it, it does appear to be a good place to be for both the author you know, and for someone who, who, was, who was doing the narration. Um, I'm, I'm pleased to be here at this at this yeah, stage well, at this stage of the market everybody's looking for a way to get their book out and god forbid to make a little bit of money doing it and this seems like a place you could start with a manuscript and I mean, well people and, don't talk about doing an audio book first but you could it might be an interesting it might be an interesting tactic sometime to build some it, it's possible uh, it's it's all pretty new i think there is some room for innovation with it uh it's it, it's it's really interesting, and there is so much built-in marketing through Audible and Amazon themselves. No, it won't do it all. You've got to you've got to have a platform. You know, mm -hmm. like you you've got a presence. You've got to do some speaking. I actually look for all of that in any books that I'll accept a, an offer for. Um, I, I, first of all, they've got to have sold. Unless I really love them, they've got to have sold <laughs> the the ebook. It's got to have reviews. Uh, I mean, a good many, mm -hmm. and they've got to have a Facebook presence, and they've got to already be doing good reads, and uh, maybe not they buying book bub. They don't need to be spending money necessarily, but they need to be active. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I can help a little bit with my presence, but not not much. 